Good evening and welcome to Senior College Planning Family Night. I'm Randy Ludwig, Coordinator for College and Career Readiness for the District. And I'd like to welcome you to this informational evening where you'll learn about everything from forms to use to apply to college, transcripts, testing, college essays, teacher recommendations, and so much more. Let me introduce our counselors who will be sharing information for the evening. We have Ms. Jordan Campo, Ms. Michelle Moyson, Mrs. Jackie Riley, Mr. Chris Robinson, and Mr. Michael White will be talking about a variety of topics as you go through the presentations. Hello, my name is Jordan Campo and I'm one of the new school counselors at Central High School this year. I'm going to kick us off with a general overview of the college application process and some important dates and timelines that are involved. Before we start, I wanna emphasize that the college process looks different for every student depending on their goals, plans, and interests. While tonight's event gives some general information that families should know about applying to college, we will get into a more tailored plan with each student during our senior meetings this fall. First, I'd like to highlight October 1st. This is the date when the FAFSA becomes available. You'll hear much more about the financial aid process later on this evening. You will also hear more information momentarily about the SAT and ACT. Moving on to November, this is the month when your student may see early action or early decision application deadlines for some colleges. Applying early is an option some students will take when applying to their top choice college. Students applying early action are simply looking to receive an admissions decision from a college earlier than they would if they applied before the regular decision deadline. Students can apply to more than one school early action. Students who apply under early decision are committing to attend that college if accepted. This is a binding agreement and therefore students may only apply to one school early decision. These early deadlines can be as early as November 1st or 15th, which will be here before you know it. So October is really when final touches should be made to those early applications. For students applying regular decision or any student who doesn't have a November 1st or 15th deadline, a good rule of thumb is to submit applications before Thanksgiving. Your students will hear us say this during their senior meetings this fall, aim to submit your applications before Thanksgiving. Doing so gets this task off your plate before the holiday season and also gives counselors time to submit supporting documentation like transcripts and letters of recommendation to your colleges. Regardless of a, college, a college's application deadline, all students must give their counselor at least 10 school days notice prior to their deadline to process that supporting documentation. So this means that students who are applying to college with an application de deadline of January 1st, which is a common deadline, must submit their application processing forms to their counselor by December 10th due to the holiday break. So students really need to be thinking and planning ahead when they are working on applications. In the weeks following the submission of an application, it is critical that your students check their email for communication from the college. An acceptance notice could be waiting in your student's inbox, but there could be a college's request for more information or a notification that an application is incomplete. So if your student is not already checking email regularly, now is the time to make that a habit. When those admissions de decision letters start rolling in between December and April, students should bring copies of these notices to their counselors. Students should also tell their counselor what college they plan to attend when they make that decision. And that brings us to May 1st, which is the last big date to keep in mind, as this is the national deadline for submitting your deposit to the school your student is attending. Once a deposit is submitted, more information regarding housing, scheduling, et cetera, will then start arriving from that college. Now I'll switch gears and talk about helping your student find the best college match. Those of you who attended Junior Parent Night last spring heard from a panel who talked about the value of in-person and virtual college visits. Students also discussed with their counselors during their junior meetings that they should come into the senior year having visited the schools that they are interested in so that they could be ready to apply to schools this fall. Of course, COVID-19 has likely interfered with students' ability to visit all of their colleges prior to beginning applications this fall. So if you haven't visited all of the schools on your wish list yet, take a look at, to see if your colleges are offering virtual admissions events. Students should also check out Naviance to see what college reps are scheduling virtual visits with ESM students this fall. As well, many colleges host accepted students day, days in the winter and early spring to encourage their accepted students to visit one last time before deciding where they will attend. Though at this point, I think we can expect them to be adapted as virtual events this year. We also wanted to know if your student has a documented disability and receives classroom or testing accommodations, ask about a school's procedure for providing accommodations to students. If your student has an IEP or 504 plan, your student will want to know where, when, and how to request support while attending that school. You should be able to find this information on the college's website. 
This will definitely be a unique year for the college application process for students, families, and the counseling staff. COVID has required changes to the application process, which really highlights the importance of thoroughly researching each individual college your student plans to apply to in order to have a firm understanding of each school's deadlines and requirements. Students and their families should take advantage of all resources college admissions teams are offering to help them apply and ultimately decide on the college they will attend. And of course, the counseling staff at ESM is here to assist. I'd like to talk about three important parts of the college application. The transcript is the most important piece of a student's application. It's what colleges use to see what you've achieved academically over your high school career. It shows the classes you've taken, the grades you've achieved, and the Regents exam scores you've gotten. It will also show your class rank and your GPA. Something to keep in mind is that your senior year does matter. Counselors send out your transcripts mid-year so colleges will see the classes you're taking during your senior year, as well as the grades you're getting. So keep your foot on the accelerator during your senior year. The next component of the application I'd like to talk about is the college essay. Keep in mind that each part of the application serves a purpose. The essay is your chance to tell your story, to give the admissions counselors a glimpse of you that the other parts of your application may not show. Most students will use what's called the common application. The common application gives five essay choices or prompts. I'd like to talk about some tips for you in writing the essay. Typically, write one essay that goes to all colleges. Value your story and your voice, and keep in mind that what you have done or experienced in life is important. Get into detail with one or two thoughts rather than glossing over your entire life story. And utilize a trusted teacher or other adult who may be able to give you constructive feedback. And by all means, use spell check. Letters of recommendation are required by most four-year colleges and are typically not required by two-year schools or community colleges. The most important thing to keep in mind as far as letters of recommendation is to check the websites of the colleges you're applying to to find out from whom and how many letters are required for that school. Your counselor will write one for you automatically but if you haven't done so already, think about which teachers you'd like to ask to write a letter for you. Now's the time to start asking. Shoot them a quick email asking if they'd be willing to write a letter for you. Teachers then upload their letter to Naviance and counselors send them electronically to colleges. COVID-19 has made it difficult for students to access testing sites for the SAT and ACT. If you are still interested in taking the SAT or ACT, please register for the SAT at collegeboard.org and ACT.org for the ACT. This past June, SUNY campuses decided to suspend the SAT and ACT testing requirement for rising high school seniors intending to enroll at a SUNY bachelor's degree granting campus for the 2021-2022 academic year. This change is only for students applying to the spring 2021, fall 2021, and spring 2022 cycles. If you have already taken the SAT or ACT and want to submit your scores, you can do so and SUNY schools will use them as part of their review. If you are applying to a private school, you will need to go to the college's website to determine whether or not the SAT or ACT is required and or waived for this year's application. If you are a student with a disability, please speak with your school counselor regarding testing accommodations. Now, let's talk about completing the application itself. Generally, students will have one, two, or three application options. Some students have their own application that students can use, usually found on their website. SUNY schools accept the SUNY application where students can apply to several SUNY schools in one place. The application link can be found right here. But most students applying to four-year colleges elect to use the Common App, which allows students to apply to most, if not all, of their schools using one account. The link to that application can be found here. During senior meetings, counselors will help students open their Common App account and begin their application. 
or help them determine if applying using another application is a better choice for them. It is up to each student to complete their applications after their senior meeting, but before their college's deadlines. So students must also keep track of each school's application deadline. Once an application is complete, Students then must notify their counselors. There are pieces of the application that we are responsible for sending to colleges on students' behalf. So we won't know to start that process until the student passes the baton to us. So next we're going to talk about how to notify your counselor that you've applied to a college. Students must notify their counselor when they have submitted an application and tell them exactly what supplemental materials need to go to each school. Students will use our application processing form to do this, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But before students' records can be sent to colleges, students and their guardians have to give ESM permission to send those records to begin with. So we also need students to complete our privacy notice. I'm now going to take you to the Counseling Office website where you can find both the privacy notice and the application processing form. So from the ESM homepage, you can find the Counseling Office website by going to Schools, Central High School, counseling office and then to locate the application materials click on 12th grade and then scroll down to college application materials so here you can find the privacy notice and the application processing form i'm not going to go over the privacy notice here um, it's a short form and it's pretty self-explanatory but i will say wait to fill this out until after you've had your senior meeting with your counselor i do want to take you to the application processing form though because there's a couple of points that i'd like to make um, along the way in order to show you the whole thing, I do actually have to fill it out because um, there's several pages to this. So I'm going to go ahead and start to do that. The first page is just some general information about the student and the application itself. So I'm going to fill in my application deadline. We'll say it's November 15th. My name, my counselor's name. I'm going to pick just a really good school that I want to apply to. I'll put in a major. Continue to the next page. Here's where you're going to tell your counselor how you applied to that school. Um, you either can choose Common App, College's Individual App, or the SUNY App. However you applied is going to determine how your counselor sends records to that school, so it's important to select the correct option. You'll also let your counselor know if you are applying early decision, early action, or regular decision, which is what most students are probably going to select here. Down here, is where you will tell your counselor how you have submitted SAT, ACT scores if you plan to do so. Um, in a traditional year, a lot of four-year colleges do require scores. Um, this is an interesting time, though, so a lot of schools have gone test optional for this admission cycle. No matter what it is that your school is requiring, this section is really a reminder to students that the student has to send the SAT or ACT scores to the school. ESM will not be sending those scores on the student's behalf. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that Ohio State is test optional right now. This is just a reminder about the privacy notice. You can either select that you've uh, sent it in already or that you plan to do so right now. Here is where you're going to tell your counselor what in addition to your transcript needs to go with your application. The transcript is assumed. Every time this form is filled out, a transcript will be sent to the school. But some schools require or recommend that you send teacher recommendations. Um, students sometimes like to select to send a recommendation letter from someone who doesn't work at our school. Counselor recommendation letters are also often required as well. Um, so this is where students will fill in what it is that needs to accompany their application in addition to the transcript. And then here you're letting us know that you understand that there is a 10 school day turnaround for those application materials to be processed. Um, so really be very mindful of your college's deadlines. And then here, you can just let us know if you have any special requests as well. And then you'll hit submit when you're done. You will need to submit an application processing form for every school that you apply to. So if you are applying to five schools, let's say, you're going to have to fill that form out five times. The privacy notice, you only have to fill out once. Just as a reminder, all of this information will be covered in individual senior meetings. 
This slide covers a topic that applies to a select few students, meaning that not all students will run into this situation or these scenarios. First are special talents. These are areas where students may be applying to a major that falls within traditionally the arts, so music, art, things like graphic design, film, architecture, fashion, the performing arts, and there certainly may be more. Uh, these majors will often require a portfolio or audition that is in addition to a traditional application. Each student, when they go to their college's web website, should look at the requirements for applying to their school. As some schools have these requirements of portfolio or audition, but you may find that your next school may not. Similarly, when it comes to college athletics, there is an extra step to the application process. For student athletes who are anticipating being division one and or division two athletes, these students must register with the NCAA for certification ahead of time. The website that is provided here will bring you directly to the website that does that. There is a cost to register and there are fee waivers that are possible as well. The school counselor has a very small role when it comes to the NCAA process. Once a student registers, they need to contact their school counselor for a transcript to be sent. Beyond that, the counselor does not play a big role. Both the high school coach and or if it's an outside club team coach, as well as the athletic department at both the high school and the college that is recruiting the athlete are the first point of contact. The counselor simply sends a transcript. Of all the college athletes, we certainly have way more Division III junior college or undecided athletes, those not going to a Division I or Division II school, and there is absolutely no requirement with the NCAA, although they do have an option to complete a free profile page if interested. Scholarships is a topic that applies to everyone which is different than uh, the previous slide, which only applies to a handful of students. There are a lot of scholarships that exist. You will find them along the way in the process. One is what we refer to as institutional scholarships. Many colleges offer these in some way or another. The most common, especially for incoming freshmen, are merit or need-based scholarships. These scholarships are ones that students do not traditionally apply for. The college decides whether a student gets them or not simply by applying to the college. If the student meets the set criteria by the college, then they will receive that scholarship money. There are sometimes additional college scholarships that can be found on their financial aid website. These will often require an additional application. Again, there are typically very few of these for incoming freshmen. Colleges traditionally keep it very small uh, when it comes to applications. They want them simply to be a merit-based system based on numbers. There are also plenty of outside scholarships, both national and the local level. These typically require a separate application and possibly an essay. You can find more information about the resources that we have listed here, like Naviance, FastWeb, and RaiseMe on the high school website, which is linked right in our slides. There are also ESM district scholarships. All seniors will receive an ESM district scholarship application in the month of March. They will have a week or two to fill out that application and they become eligible for ESM scholarships. Last but not least, there are local community scholarships. Please check local businesses, your place of employment, uh, or other banks, credit unions, as they often have scholarships available as well. Our final slide for this evening is important dates for families. We'll be offering a FAFSA night via Zoom on October 19th 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. This evening is to lend support to families 
as they fill out the FAFSA application, which is required for financial aid for colleges. We work with the Hask Corporation and the financial aid officers from around the county to offer individualized support. This year, virtually, you'll go to a Zoom link and go to a private breakout room so everything is confidential. You work one-on-one -on -one with a financial aid officer from a college. You could have a simple question or an extremely complicated question. They can help you with everything. Even if you've used this service before, it's a great opportunity to just double check, check out any inf new information, or just get support. If you've never filled out a FAFSA application, it's a great opportunity for you to support through the process. Everyone is welcome. You need to make an appointment, so please call 315-434-3306. We'll send you a materials list and help you get the information on how to attain that Zoom link for the evening. If you haven't yet done so, please make sure you check out our financial aid night link on the website under virtual events on the high school. Sharon Halpin, the director of financial aid at Lemoyne College, does a great job giving lots of great information regarding financial aid. If you're looking for information on SUNY, this link is a wonderful place to visit. You can find out SUNY college fairs and where they're happening, information about a particular campus, a particular SUNY, or if they are offering some events, the financial aid events, how to apply to a SUNY workshop. Lots of good information here. This presentation will be posted on our website under the 12th grade, and that's a place you'll utilize the hyperlink when you get to look at it. Still have questions? Great resource for you is our website, which you've seen earlier in the presentation too. Go to esmschools.org, Central High School, Right on the left, you'll see the counseling office. One-stop shopping. A lot of the information you need are right here. Go to the grade, 12th grade your child is in. You can go to financial aid and scholarships. All these links have opportunities. Still can't find what you're looking for or have a particularly unusual question or just need a little reassurance? Here's where you find the emails for our counselors and where you can get your questions answered. Email them if you can't find the information on our website. I'd like to thank you for viewing this tonight. We've enjoyed talking to you and giving you information. Look forward to a fun time through the college application process.